Ah, the good old days when fears over coronavirus were safely contained within the cosy confines of a bat soup meme. Now look what's happened. Global pandemic, panic buying across the world, entire countries quarantined. Thanks, open borders. On the one hand, you have Italy controlled by an open borders left-wing government. Over 10,000 coronavirus cases, over 800 deaths. And a vector for the virus spreading across the entire continent of Europe. Then on the other hand, you you have Russia, which closed its entire 2,600 mile border back in January. Just 20 coronavirus cases, most of which were Russians returning from Italy. Most of the victims have already recovered, zero deaths. No pandemic in Russia, strong border controls, minimal coronavirus cases. Seems like there's some kind of connection here. Same story in other countries which closed their borders early like Mongolia which has recorded just a single case. Singapore which like Russia closed its border to all Chinese travelers back in January has now passed the peak of coronavirus infections and has virtually defeated its spread. Meanwhile, even as Italy was desperately preparing to lock down its entire country, EU officials were steadfast in their insistence that no border controls would be imposed. Because maintaining the sacred flow of international traffic is always going to be more important than stopping a global pandemic. Globalism uber alles. There are still people arriving at major UK and other European airports from Italy who aren't even being screened for coronavirus. So I've just arrived back, having spent four days in Milan, just picked up my bags at Heathrow, and straight through. No checks from medical staff. No temperature checks, no thermal checks. And you know what's also more important than stopping a global pandemic? Making sure nobody feels offended. The World Health Organization has literally made about seven different statements urging countries not to profile. Despite countries that did profile, like Russia and Hungary, limiting coronavirus cases. The WHO also made numerous statements in which they tried to language police the words you're allowed to use to describe coronavirus to stop people from feeling stigmatized. Fuck off. Just do your fucking job, deal with the pandemic, instead of wasting time telling me what sounds are allowed to come out of my mouth. Is coronavirus really a world-altering event that could crash the global economy and kill millions of people worldwide? Or are the dangers being exaggerated to whip up hysteria for political purposes? The fact that it's being politically exploited is beyond doubt. Trump has taken the position that he thinks the hysteria is overblown, so the media automatically assumes the opposing narrative. If Trump had instead hyped the threat of coronavirus, the media would be calling him hysterical and accusing him of planning to cancel the election. Whatever Trump does, they advocate the opposite. Because orange man bad. Orange man bad. Orange man bad. Orange man. Orange man. Orange man. CNN just held a panel discussion daydreaming about how a coronavirus pandemic could help get Trump out of office. Andrew Yang even celebrated how it would make Americans yearn for a technocratic government once again. And we all know when Joe becomes our president, he's going to bring back many of the uh, Obama alums who are really, really competent and technocratic, and that there's going to be real hunger for that in the days to come among many, many Americans if the coronavirus crisis yes. uh, continues to grow. The recent stock market plunge has also been seized upon by leftists who are openly celebrating coronavirus wiping out Trump's economic gains. Remember, these are the same people who for over a year have been praying for a financial collapse to stop Trump's re-election. I said going through a recession would be worth it if it undermined Trump's popularity. So yes, it's obviously being politically exploited, which in turn necessitates the constant recycling of hysteria in order to keep fears high. The death rate from coronavirus is lower than what we've been led to believe. At first, the WHO claimed it was 3.4%. But this figure was arrived at simply by dividing the number of total infections by the number of deaths. It was then revised down to 2% and then down to 1%. But in every country, there are likely to be thousands of people who catch coronavirus, recover, 
and are not recorded in official numbers. Many of those people will be symptomless or have relatively mild symptoms and recover without ever visiting hospital or being recorded as a coronavirus case. So the actual mortality rate is almost certainly lower than 1%. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this isn't a big deal. And the people who say it's just the flu are obviously downplaying the severity of the true threat. But as the 24-hour media news cycle breathlessly reports every new coronavirus death toll, it's interesting to consider what we're indoctrinated to care about and what we choose to ignore. 100 Americans die in car crashes every single day and no one really cares. 128 Americans die of opioid drug overdoses every single day, and no one really cares. Around 50,000 Americans die from the flu every single year, and no one really cares. Globally, the flu kills 290,000 to 650,000 people every single year, and no one really cares. Is coronavirus impossible to defeat? If you look at the numbers out of Singapore, South Korea, and even China, the figures suggest it can be controlled. South Korea's health minister says they've, quote, already passed the peak of coronavirus infections. The number of new infections in South Korea has dropped every day for the past three days. Similar story in Singapore, which again closed its border back in January. And China just closed the last of its 16 makeshift hospitals that were built in Wuhan. China reported just 17 new cases of coronavirus in Wuhan, the lowest figure since published records began. Alfred Wu, associate professor at the National University of Singapore's Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, said the outbreak has basically ended in China. If we look at recorded cases, just 0.005% of China's 1.4 billion population, 80,000 people, have been infected with coronavirus. As Dave Blount points out, only 1 in 20,000 Chinese have contracted the coronavirus so far. Around 150 million Chinese would have to contract the coronavirus illness to reach the same proportion of Americans, 10%, who had the flu last season. Yet leaders like Angela Merkel tell us it's a foregone conclusion that up to 70% of Germans, over 55 million people, will be infected. And yet, the Chinese numbers are obviously going to be higher because of unrecorded cases, but 55 million infected people in Germany, is that really accurate? And again, I'm not downplaying coronavirus, it's a big deal. Strong measures need to be taken like closing borders, which no other major country apart from Russia, Singapore, and a couple of others did before it was too late. But at a certain point, the panic and the hysteria becomes more of a threat to stability than the illness itself. After Australia registered just a handful of cases, people responded by panic buying toilet paper. This was then replicated in numerous other countries around the world. Yo fam, you know you can't eat toilet paper. If you're quarantined indoors for a month, unable to leave your house, there aren't many recipes that include hand sanitizer as an ingredient. But what is it with the toilet paper? If it gets really bad, just wash your bum in the shower. Coronavirus isn't a shitting disease, is it? Why the toilet paper? When you have so-called intelligent people tricking the utterances of a 16-year-old girl with biblical truth as to what the climate's going to do in 60 years' time, let alone 100, and now all this coronavirus stuff, we surely must be in the age of hysteria. According to Demetrius Savrikos, lecturer in consumer and business psychology at University College London, in times of uncertainty, people enter a panic zone that makes them irrational and completely neurotic. The mere fact that toilet paper comes in large packaging draws people in because it gives them a sense of control. The coronavirus panic has triggered our inherently ingrained fear of our own mortality. It's a reminder that we're all going to die. So panic buying restores that sense of control over death, temporarily alleviating the deep-seated fear of our own fragile mortality. Everyone should have at least a month's worth of long-term storable food anyway. Squabbling in Tesco for that last pack of bumper Andrex isn't really going to accomplish anything. Your reaction to the coronavirus should be to wash your hands, have a reasonable supply of stockpiled food at home, and indeed, to stay at home. You can't do much more than that. That is 
the rational response. But you should also react to anyone fanning the flames of coronavirus hysteria for political purposes with a healthy dose of skepticism. That's also a rational response. <laughs> It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.